Steele, and he's going to talk about varieties of contextuality, emphasizing non-embeddability. So, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. I hope everybody hears me all right. And I shall start screen sharing now. So let me let me talk today about what I understand uh, on varieties of contextuality. And there I would like to emphasize non-embeddability. And um, if you need uh, the slides, you can get it from, from here. So this is a little bit more complicated, but it's easy to remember because that's just the name of our, of our conference now. And, and let me also say, if you have a strong uh, wish to uh, interrupt me, please do so. Uh, but only if you have a strong one, you know? Uh, if you have a soft one, you can wait until maybe I've, I finish in time. I hope I'll do that, there are not too many slides. Um, and I'll be rather schematic, so. Um, uh, sorry for, for reacting immediately, but did you have had a tilt in that, that uh, URL? There is a space be before your, your name. And yes, this, ah, this, this is a tilde, a yeah. This is a tilde, and the tilde yeah. is not represented in my, in my PDF. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, for telling me. Uh, but, but, but um, uh, the resolution, it resolves into the right URL. So it's, it's all right. Thank you. Th thank you for telling me that. Uh, somehow I should represent the tilde better and, and I will do that. I will, I will send you a revised file, okay? Um, so, okay, so let's, let's just jump start. Uh, I would like to locate three my main varieties of quantum contextuality and on the first slide, I will introduce two of them. The first one, I think we are going to hear about uh, this, this form uh, by the next talk uh, of Andre. Uh, I, I believe that Bohr had already uh, a synthetic notion of complementarity based on, uh, 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 on, on contextuality, based on complementarity. And this may also be the case uh, for Heisenberg. Uh, he also considered uncertainties um, and so on and so forth. So, so these are synthetic notions. I'm not going to talk about this um, uh, today. I'm, I'm uh, pretty sympathetic to them, but uh, I think they will probably be covered by Andrei Grenikov. So uh, today I will just have a short introduction to non-classical probability distributions, such as of the born gleason lovac type and forms derived from generalizations of Cauchy type functional equations yielding violations of classical predictions. These forms are both quasi empirically. I mean, the empirical is, uh, I put it under quotes because uh, you cannot measure them simultaneously. You have to measure certain things one after the other. You measure one observable uh, at breakfast, the other at lunch and the third one at dinner. But if you put them together uh, you, uh, and you assume you can do that because you assume counterfactual characters and so on. Specker discussed this already in a dialectical paper in 1960. Uh, you, can, you can find stochastic violations of, uh, of quantum predictions as compared to, to classical predictions. And uh, in this second type, there are again two types, two subtypes. Or, um, uh, one of the subtypes is based on bull bell type inequalities, which have been discussed by Bell, Froissart, Pitovsky, Zierelsen, Klauserhorn, Shimoni, Holt, Supes, Zanotti, and Cabello. And these are basically all based on, on an old notion uh, that already Bull um, discussed and, uh, and, and Pitovsky discovered that Bull discussed, discussed this. Uh, so these are uh, bounds um, on. Uh, these are linear bounds on, on classical uh, probabilities, which can be derived geometrically by some polytope method, uh, no matter how you call them. You know, there are many people call, call them very differently, 
but these are all based on kind of polytope geometric methods. And the other one is based on gadget graphs. Um, so some helper graphs with, which, have, which have some input output terminals. So you pre-select something and then you post-select uh, and you ask yourself, well, what does this graph predict and so on and so forth. And uh, one of the first of such graphs was actually discovered uh, two years before the famous Coach and Specker paper by Coach and Specker themselves in 1965, a paper that is hardly um, perceived in the community. Um, uh, uh, Adam calls this Hardy type. Uh, I would like to refer to Stigler's law of epinomy uh, for this denomination, but uh, who am I to uh, not call them Hardy type? Uh, Belinfante before Hardy had uh, similar um, discussions, uh, stairs, and of course Cabello uh, has a lot of papers on these. Um, <clears throat> uh, now there are the, there is a third type of um, of quantum con contextuality which I would like to concentrate today. Um, and this is non-empirically, it's logically, algebraic, theoretically, counterfactual again. Uh, uh, this it depends on the structure of observables with non-classical interpretations in so far as, and this is the main part, uh, the main important thing that I want to stress is that there's a non-faithful, uh, so a non-homeomorphic, non-homomorphic embedding into Boolean algebras associated with inseparability of um, of, of, uh, of vertices, non-unital value assignments, and other non-classical properties. The other non-classical properties will be very new. Uh, I will come to that uh, in my very last slide. And then, of course, there is this, uh, or should I say, gold standard. It's, it's uh, the non-existence of any classical interpretation, the total loss of any two-valued measures. This is nowadays called um, coach becker theorem, but uh, there have been other people um, I, uh, predicting that before. Historically, probably Specker was the first to realize that, but that is a discussion uh, that is still ongoing. Um, and then of course, Gleason, after Gleason, everybody um, not uh, concerned with these matters, I think had this idea that, um, that, uh, that, that actually, um, uh, there, there, there don't exist any classically two-valued measures um, on, on such observable structures. Zilla and Schlesinger, um, not very well received in the community. Kamba, uh, Kamba was a student uh, in, 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 in um, <clears throat> Switzerland at that time. Coach and Specker, of course, well-known Pitovsky, uh, Ruzhovsky and Pitovsky, very interesting papers. I like those two papers very much. Cabello, of course, did a lot of uh, uh, research on the structure, and uh, we did also uh, some some um, some generalization of these things um, together with Abbott and and Kalut. Now, um, let me first just uh, briefly mention what what is usually. Uh, done. What is usually the tactics, what, what one, which one usually applies, that one usually applies is the following. First, you take a suitable bag or collection of maybe quantum or partition logic or whatever observables, which are in different, probably intertwined contexts. Yeah. And then um, you, you, uh, you, so, so you, you take the the bag of observables from the quantum or from some partition logic, yeah? And then you reinterpret them, you try to force upon them a classical interpretation, uh, which in formal terms is just the two valued states and you get the classical predictions. And then of course you say, well, I don't want these classical predictions, the genuine uh, predictions associated with these quantum observables are the quantum interpretation with uh, with amounts to vertex labeling by vectors, vectors are basically <clears throat> um, um, uh, equivalent to pure states spanning uh, the uh, the subspaces, the one dimensional subspaces uh, of, of the respective Hilbert spaces. And then you get the quantum predictions and bingo, 
you know, hopefully you establish a discrepancy between classical and quantum. So you take basically uh, the the uh, the the uh, a collection of quantum observers. You try to force upon them a classical interpretation, and you see that those. Uh, 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 cache and and this you call sometimes mo most of the time you call um, um, contextuality. Yeah. Um, there are three important issues to consider, which I would like to uh, point your attention to. First of all, there's a fact that in general the logic and algebra does not uniquely determine the probability distribution. That is the predictions. Yeah, so you can have a varied forms of uh, of probability distributions relative to uh, certain axioms, um, which uh, which uh, which are not unique to the to the to the structure of the to, to the logic of the observables. the The second question is given uh, the the second uh, note is a question. Given some logic or some observables, what possible probability distributions are allowed relative to which axioms of probability? This, I think, has not been answered um, in, an, in a systematic way so far. And of course, just another note, the choice of the distribution depends on the physical, psychological, and so on realization of the um, collections of observables, of the bags of observables. Um, and one anecdotal example is that of <clears throat> uh, a cyclic lo logic. Uh, it's co usually called a pentagon or a pentagram or a house type house. Um, there is a, a very well known quantum logician um, uh, uh, who, who calls this the house graph. Um, so in quantum logics, it's, it's mostly called the house graph, and which, which has three uh, probability distributions. Uh, which um, which are which are quite interesting. The first one is a classical probability distribution in terms of the convex combinations of the eleven two valued states there. On. And then uh, there is the quantum probability distribution according to Born, Gleason, and Lovac, yeah, based on uh, vertex labeling uh, by vectors. And then there is an exotic probability according to Garel, Grichy, and Miller uh, and Wright. You know, um, uh, Garel, Grichy, and Miller, they, they kind of uh, browse through a variety of uh, interesting co uh, configuration specs of observables in their respective uh, states. And they found also uh, already in, in 1974, even before, right? This is uh, not very well known, I believe, in the community, that, um, that you can have a probability distribution which is neither classical nor quantum because on all these uh, intertwining observables you can have the value one half yeah and this isn't this isn't reachable by any classical or quantum uh, probability distribution um, uh, Wright has has uh, popularized this and it's quite interesting but we don't know if there, whether there are not more, more uh, 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 realizations of probability distributions. Okay, so let me let me uh, stop uh, at this interlude here. So far, we only spoke about comparing different probability distributions on fixed collections of intertwined of the observables, this bag of observables. Now we shall be talking about weird non-classical collections of intertwined observables, okay? So uh, now, now I will give you a, a, a kind of a refreshing of the notion of inseparability of, of vertices. Inseparab I call it inseparability one of one, 101. And this is a, or also contained in a paper by Coach and Specker, I would call I would like to call it uh, Coach and Specker's demarcation criter criterion. This is uh, in in the famous paper of Coach and Specker, published in 1967. It's the theorem zero, yeah. It's their theorem zero, and uh, I copied it from their paper. Uh, let's there be a partial, well, let's, let's not talk about partiality. This is, uh, let, let there be a Boolean algebra, a necessary and sufficient condition that this 
partial algebra is embeddable in a Boolean, in a larger Boolean algebra is that for every pair of distinct elements A and B in this uh, uh, partial Boolean algebra, there is a homomorphism such that uh, you can separate the vertices. Yeah, and Kochner and Specker, after giving their famous example, they which they called gamma gamma uh, two, um, they gave already a, a much smaller example of a bag of observables, which which does not which does not um, se separate between um, between um, uh, two respective observables. Yeah. But it's not the A and B here, you know, because A, uh, if A is true, uh, then then B, this implies B to be false. But I, I just copied it out of historic uh, reasons. Just this, this is the original uh, diagram in their paper. And this is not a hypergraph, but a graph, you know. So uh, what we will stay within our, uh, within this small lecture, we will stay uh, uh, with hypergraphs. So here, uh, on the on the in the third in the third column is uh, a deformed version of um, Kochner and Specker's gamma three, and um, uh, the the second and third lines are uh, the two valued states. I mean, there are a lot of two valued states on these uh, hypergraphs, but there are two valued states uh, such that uh, such that a one. Um, a1, uh, let's say A1 uh, is, um, is one. And then of course, um, uh, uh, the M has to be zero. Ah, I have to define what a two valued state is. Well, uh, given any context, the context is here represented by a smooth curve. Yeah, uh, there, has, there has to be only one one and the other and all the others have, have to be zero. So, so if A1 is one M, and a prime eight have to be zero, yeah? And now uh, you have to believe me, uh, but, you can sim but you can quite easily prove that by contradiction, that if it's that, that this is a true impulse, that, that this here, this small uh, diagram here is a true uh, impulse, uh, contains uh, two true implies false gadgets. So such that if a one equals one, this implies, Classically, under the relative to assumptions, that a eight has to be zero. Yeah, this is an, an easy proof. Uh, by contradiction, you just assume that a one and a eight uh, are one, and then you you derive a complete contradiction relative to the assumptions. So uh, you also know that a eight has to be um, uh, zero. So um, uh, from the rules of the two valued measured states, you have A8 is zero, M is zero. So uh, A1 has to be zero. And, and the same is true for the upper uh, diagram. If A8 is, is one, then A8 prime has to be one as well. So you cannot differentiate between, oh, I discovered a, a, an error in this uh, in this in this diagram it's unfortunately published in fuser fa already uh, so uh, so so the the two um, vertices a1 and a prime um, they cannot be separated uh, as well as a8 and a prime 8 cannot be separated and this is an entirely new um, new way of, of non-classicality because you can prove and Coach and Specker have pointed that out already in 1967 in this paper, uh, everybody cites uh, for its other strong result that, um, that you, cannot, uh, you cannot hope to embed such a thing if you have no, uh, no, no separable sets of two valued states. Uh, but I, I would like to advertise this, you know, and in, in order to advertise them, here are the primes, all right, yeah, just one prime missing here. Uh, okay, uh, so, so these are the, the, the first and the uh, second columns are um, um, uh, configurations uh, for four-dimensional space, if it exists. I could only secure... Uh, uh, this 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 letter to exist. I got a faithful orthogonal uh, orthogonal representation of the second column. 
of the first, I wasn't able to do that. But, you know, so, so this, the second column can be uh, realized quantum mechanically. Okay, so this is a totally new, in my opinion, um, uh, type of, of contextuality based on non-separable sets of two valued states. There is another weird, uh, weird behavior of such bags of observables, which is uh, by the quantum logician community is called non-unital set of, in this case, say six two-valued states or value assignments, classical value assignments. And um, th this one is uh, from a paper by Joseph Cutlets based uh, on a dissertation by Erna Gravitecher Seeberger, a dissertation with Specker, uh, based on the two, two letters of Schütte to Professor Specker from um, 65 and, and 87. Um, uh, it's, it's quite interesting that such a bag of observables only, only has uh, two valued states, actually six two valued states, which, which have uh, the value one on uh, the vector zero, one, zero. Yeah. So the other ones that are directly uh, in, contextual, uh, in, in the same context linked to that one, uh, just for instance, in this case, one, zero, zero, or zero, zero, one, <clears throat> they, uh, they have to be uh, classically um, false or zero all the time. And this is totally, uh, this is totally non-classical. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, I mean, th these are orthogonal, but, um, but these are, for instance, the, the minus one, uh, zero, um, uh, two, they are not, uh, they are not orthogonal and um, you cannot classically differentiate between them. So they are also non, um, Non, non separable, but they're even weirder than that. They have to be zero all the time. You know, they, there is no way that, uh, um, for instance, uh, um, <clears throat> um, uh, uh, minus one, zero, two um, is, um, is, uh, is classically one. Yeah, uh, for, for that, you have to believe me. You have to, to write out all the two valued states, but please believe me about that, yeah? So th this is uh, not very well realized in the quantum uh, um, uh, foundation community, but very well realized in the quantum logic community. It's a very interesting result, I believe. And uh, they exist even weirder than that, you know, and this is my, my final slide. Uh, um, uh, co types of contextuality, because you can have still two valued states, which are even separating. And I, I give you this a representation of this in terms of a partition logic, partitioning the set one to six, natural numbers one to six. Uh, uh, so it has even, it, it can be embedded, but, you know, it can be embedded in a larger Boolean algebra, but uh, you cannot color them by three colors. So if you think if this would exist, I mean, you can prove that it doesn't exist. Um, uh, th this has been, by the way, uh, invented by Critchy. He calls it G32. It's contained in a paper in, this, in, the, in the early 70s, 79, uh, 71. If, um, if this would be a classic uh, quantum mechanically representable, which it is not, um, uh, you would have a kind of breach of the spectral theorem uh, because you would need four colors, you know? So, so, so this is a very funny thing. And, and I'm not able to, uh, to, to realize one which, is, uh, which, have, which has a vertex labeling as vectors according to Lovac. But maybe there exists such a thing and uh, I'm searching for, and, and maybe you are interested in that. And this is a very recent preprint discussing this uh, together with uh, P Professor Shekerasis um, from YAST. Um, and, um, and we have uh, uh, there tried to, to figure out how to color such hyper, hyper diagrams. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm finished. Thank you. Uh, we have 
Uh, time for questions. Hi, Carl. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Ah, Adam. Um, hello. 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 Uh, I have a, there's something I, I didn't understood was when you said talking about the, the pentagram that we have three different types of probability theories. You mentioned uh, quantum theory, uh, non contextual hidden variable theories, and you mentioned this uh, assignment of, of, of wrong right, for instance. But you, you said that we are not sure whether we can have different types than these three. To yes. my understanding, uh, this right assignment is nothing but a vertex of the, of the non-disturbance polytope in the, in the language of, of polytopes, which contains the quantum, which contains the classical. So in a sense, everything is already there. So, well, I, I think, I, I think this is a very important point. You, you actually have to tell me first uh, what you consider to be a probability distribution. And there you have to give me some axioms for that. And for instance, okay. uh, for instance, uh, um, Gleason uh, had, had this additivity among orthogonal uh, states. Yeah, so I, I think you call it e exclusivity and, um, mm -hmm. and and completeness or something like this. So so uh, relative to that, you may be able to exclude some things, but uh, but maybe you are excluding too much for other situations. Yeah, so so the most general, I would I, I would rather uh, have it this way. I, I would rather say let's just look at the at the hyper at the hypergraph. You know, and and let's not uh, to be too stringent on the probabilities. Um, fine, fine, but I mean, and, even, and, even... And, and for instance, with, with respect to the additivity, all three are allowed. Okay, my my point is that uh, in the case of the the right theory, right theory is is violating the exclusivity principle, and I cannot think of anything beyond that. So they... I, I'm not sure. Well, we, we have to discuss this. Uh, yeah. If, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Let me, let, let, let us discuss this later. I, I don't really understand it, you know? I, okay. I'm basically, all I'm basically saying is um, uh, rights or Garel, Gritchie and Miller's um, uh, in rights approach they uh, with 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 painting uh, in the in the in the intertwined one half, um, they 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 satisfy all these type axioms, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, and and if you call that a probability distribution, and I'm tempted to call that a probability distribution, mm -hmm. then it's safe to to include them. But you may you you may find other important characterizations as you mentioned which which throw which throws this out but i would be careful to throw out the baby too early with the password okay thank you okay it seems that uh, we need to move on again thank you again for the talk and for the question and uh, Next speaker is Andrei Hrenikov. Uh, he is going to talk about formalization of Bohr's contextuality.